Hi, welcome to Funnet by Videos. This is DC here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Mifair Classic EV1 4K RFID tags. These are some of the features of uh, the 4K tags. So this has got obviously more memory than Mifair Classic 1K. The entire memory is organized as follows. So altogether, there are 40 sectors. If you compare this with the 1K, 1K had only 16 sectors, whereas 4K, 4K has got 40 sectors. Now, out of these 40 sectors, the first 32 sectors are compatible to 1K. That is, the first 32 sectors have four blocks each, and out of these four blocks, three blocks is used to store the data, and one block and one block is for sector trailer and all these four blocks have got a separate access bits the next consecutive eight sectors they have got 16 blocks each out of which 15 blocks are used to store the data and one block is for the sector trailer and you know the sector trailer is the block where the access access bytes as well as the values of the key A and key B are stored. Now, because of because of the way the the sector trailer is organized, so if you compare with the one K, or for example, if you compare with the these thirty two sectors, so where all the four blocks have a separate access bits, whereas here, because of the shortage of the access bits. Now blocks are grouped, so they're grouped into five blocks each. So as I mentioned here, each five blocks belongs to a group, and each access bit controls this group. So in other words, each access bit controls or applies to the five blocks in a group. But the sector teller has got its own access bit. So if you didn't get this point, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll understand when I give you a demonstration on that. So you can also have Mifair Classic, the version 0, as well as Mifair Classic EV1 version. I have not used the Mifair Classic EV1 4K. I've used the 1K. But the only difference between the Classic and the EV1 is, EV1 has got a 32-byte signature, which you can use to make sure the RFID tags are indeed manufactured by the NXP. If you understand how the Mifair Classic 1K works, then you can, you know, you can easily understand uh, the 4K as well because there is no difference in the way the access bytes are stored, the way the value block works, the authentication works, they're all the same compared to the Mifair Classic 1K. Then all my videos I've been using four types of for readers. Now I've been using the software or I've been using the PN532 based build your own kind of a reader. So I've also made videos using ACR122U or ACR1252 readers and I also got videos on how to do these RFID operations using OmniKey 5022, 5421, readers as well as the Arduino based uh, like a build your own type of reader using PN532 or MFRC522. However, in this uh, video I'll be using the OmniKey 5421 reader. The software used is different for each type of readers. However, the user interface is the same for all the readers. So if you know, or if you if you know how to use this in this video using 5421, the same concept will also apply for any other readers. Now this is the software we use to train how to program OmniKey readers. And as you can see, I have connected my OmniKey Reader Writer, this is 5421, 
this comes with both uh, contact as well as uh, the contactless interface so i'm going to place a mifi classic 4k this is just a classic it's not the ev1 so as you can see here the reader interface you can see there are two reader interfaces one is the the top one is for the contact and the contactless i'm going to choose contactless i'm going to choose the mifi classic 1k 4k and when you hit when you first thing you know you have to activate and you can see all the various commands that are used in uh, omnikey reader writers and when you hit this read entire tag so all these 40 sectors of data is read from the card and it's shown on the screen and you can see all the various uh, the commands already covered um, in other videos explaining you know how this uh, these commands work now these commands you can also find in in the developers guide of uh, 5421 and basically you have to learn how the activation works so activation in omni key is done in two steps similar to ac 122u you have to first load the keys then you have to activate then you have to read it or read or write operations so if you scroll down now starting from i already got some data on this uh, sectors as well so if you see here so here the sector number starts from 0 and goes up to 39 the first 32 sectors have got four data blocks and one sector trailer so this is very similar to MIFI Classic 1K and in fact if you have got a system that works with the MIFI Classic 1K you can still use the MIFI 4K so you'll end up using only the first 16 sectors and not the the rest so these are like interchangeable cards so sector 32 as you can see here from this point on the number of blocks in each sector increases so they have got 16 sectors if you count the the sorry 16 16 blocks so if you go to the last column it says block 0 to block 15 now the first five blocks from 0 to 4 they belong to one group and uh, the next five blocks from 5 to 9 belongs to the second group and the third group is from block number 10 to 14 so there's no difference in the read and write operations if you've seen my earlier videos on MIFI classic uh, ev one k it's all the same so if you want to make changes here just directly edit edit this uh, block data and before you write before you hit this uh, w button you have to authenticate now on the top of the screen you can see what is your the sector that's currently selected so good authentication tab so choose sector 32 and authenticate and then you can write so you can see that all the various commands that are used so it's the first authenticate and the next is the the binary update command now everything you know read and write operations are the same the only thing you need to understand uh, clearly is how this the access bits work so right click on the sector trailer of block 32 and choose change access rights so here this is the same screen that you have seen in my MIFI classic 1k video the only difference here is the labels have changed now now whatever you set in the first drop down list applies for block 0 to 4 so as i mentioned before for for the purpose of access rights the blocks of 5 they work as one single group and whatever is set here will apply for block 5 to 9 and whatever is set here applies to block 10 to 14 and this is a separate access bit for the sector trailer 
Now, for the sake of demonstration, I'm going to choose this in random, but you have to be very careful when you choose these numbers. Say, for example, if you go and choose 3, you might end up having a block that is uh, not readable or sector, entire sector not readable. Okay. So, I'm going to use this uh, safer one that's 4 because if you can see in the background, if the if the access bit set to 4, I can read either A or B. And if you set that to 3, you cannot read with the, you cannot read this at all because, you know, there is, uh, uh, the way this access bit works is uh, different. So, to put in simple words, if you set this to 3, you have to activate with the uh, key B in order to read the block. But we are using the here the key A. I'm going to keep the sector trailer as 1 because this is the, the default factory setting. With this sector trailer access bit, you can go back and change everything back to the default as well. So click OK. So I'm going to, before probably before you write, you have to make sure you have authenticated the sector 32. So when I say authenticated sector 32, it means you know you can use any uh, block address in the sector 32 for authentication. So authenticate. I'm going to clear these locks and say hit this uh, the right button. Probably it's, it's uh, good to have a feature where the software asks you uh, for the confirmation because writing to sector trailer is. Um, it's not, you know, it's, it's not a simple thing, you know, you might end up making the sector non-readable. So, here the, the reader says the write was successful. And also, if you can see what has happened here. So, what you see here is done by the software. Now, the first five blocks, if you ignore this, because that, that corresponds to sector trailer of the sector 31. The first five blocks from 0 to 4, they all have the same access bit 1. The next five blocks from 5 to 9, they have the access uh, right 2. Then the next five blocks has the access uh, bit 4. And we, we still have the sector trailer access bit set to 1. Now I'm going to close and reactivate. So this time, let's just try to read only the sector 32. Authenticate, read. So you can you can see here. After you decode the access bit stored in the byte B6, B7, B8, you end up getting these access bits. So one for the first five blocks, two for the next five blocks, and four for the the last five blocks. So I can go back. and change the access threads back to the factory setting and say right now we are back to the factory setting now all other operations you know like the the value block operations so they're all the same that doesn't matter whether you use uh, me for 1k or 4k so please see my other videos and I've explained in detail how to use this increment and decrement operations. So what we have covered in this video is, so now we know what is uh, the difference between 1K and 4K. And you know 4K has got a huge memory. It has got 4K kilobits of memory. And these type of, uh, the uh, these memory cards, you know, they're, they're very well suit for a multiplication RFID solutions, where probably you can, because of the amount of memory you've got, you can use this, say for example, like a, a, a library access card where every time, you know, um, a book is issued, you can use a block to write the log of the book, the date and time issued and so on and so forth. So that's all and thanks for watching.